Good afternoon. This is Chris Brecher with Brecher Trading. How I traded JP Morgan on triple witching at the close. I had so many comments about this. I wasn't the only one to make money on this. A lot of people did. But I thought I'd try to go over this complicated strategy that once you learn it, not that complicated. So let's just go over what I did. The first thing is imbalances. So we get on Schwab, the imbalances on the New York Stock Exchange at 1550. That's at 350 Eastern. On triple witching, you get some funky ones. As you see, JP Morgan. 11 million to buy on the close. I couldn't even add all the decimals. Usually it's like imbalance of 80,000 to sell, 80,000 to buy. 11 million is a ton. So I want to show you what we did in there. So JP Morgan was trading about 52 and a half. So I'll show you on the right. So you go and take JP Morgan. The stock was trading about 152 and a half right here, right at 150, 1550. Then that came out and the stock exploded. So I was telling everybody in the chat, you know, at the very close, there's nowhere they're going to match up 11 million on the close. You know what? Stock's trading about 153 and a half. I'm going to throw in and buy the 155 puts at 20 cents. Now, what's the reason for that? Because the worst I can lose is 20 cents. So I put in to buy 10, $200 worth. What happens in there is that gives me the right, not the obligation to sell the stock at 155. So what happened? Boom. This is what happened. Look on the left. It's very difficult to see, but I'll put it down here. At 1555, 355, they traded at 20 cents. Stock right here popped to here. It was really not that high, but somebody panicked. So I got off five out of 10. So now I'm long five puts. Five puts of the 155 puts gives me the right to sell it at 155. So what did I do? Stock started going down. Do I sell the puts? No. I put in to buy the stock. 154. I got filled at 153.98. So now I'm long five puts at 20 cents and long 500 shares at 153.7 and us. Uh, 0.98. What does that give me? That means I'm long a I'll put, I'm long a stock. So that means if stock goes to 160, I lose 20 cents on the puts and the stock is unlimited. What does that equal? I'm long a call. I'm long the 155 call. So if the stock goes to 160, within one minute, I can sell the stock and then I have a put that will expire. So let's go over what I did in here. The first thing I did is the stock sold off right here. This is a tick chart just because it's clear. So you see the stock sold off. I didn't sell the bottom, uh, buy the bottom. I bought it 153.98. Uh, Next thing is the stock started going up. So now I'm long puts, uh, long stock. I don't care where it goes now. I've just locked in a dollar two on the stock. Minus 20 cents on the put. So now I've made 82 cents on five or 82 times 500, which is $410. That's a nice little scalp in there. A lot of other people did it. Next thing, right on the close, you had to figure people were going to panic and buy the stock in anticipation of the big buy. The big buy, just keep that in mind. So I threw in to sell that 500 shares at 155.30. Now, you might say, why didn't you put market on close? At 10 minutes to go, once the balances come out, you can't put in a market on close. You have to sort of spin the wheel of where you're going to put in your order. So what happened? Boom, I got filled at 155.30. So what do I have now? Now, I bought stock at 153.98. I sold stock at 155.30. So now I've locked in a dollar thirty-two, five hundred shares. So now I've made six hundred and sixty dollars, six hundred and sixty dollars, and now I'm still long those puts for twenty cents. So what happened on the close? Well, I'm going to change this around so you can see it a little better. So now J.P. Morgan on the close, close went fifty-five fourteen as you see on the left. On the right, I'm going to show you J.P. Morgan. 
but I'm going to show you after the close. So JP Morgan after the close sold off. Why did it sell off? Because they did a massive buy when really the stock was here before that imbalance. That's number one, but that's not everything. This is the other thing that you have to keep in mind. The SPY sold off. The actual ES got nailed on the close. So that gave you more confidence that that put you might be able to make money on. What do I mean by that? Well, the stock closed to 155.14. So your 155 put it expires worthless because it's out of the money. But because of the S&P selling off and JP Morgan had that unnatural bump, as you see this bump, holy cow, on the close, that my theory was the stock would start to go down. If it's 0.01 in the money, your put gets automatically exercised. But it wasn't. It was 14 cents out of the money. So theoretically, it expires worthless. You have up to 60 minutes after the close to call Schwab or Thinkorswim or whomever your clearing firm is or brokerage firm to tell them to exercise your put that would have expired worthless. Now, 4.30, 4.30 Eastern. I'm watching the stock sit at 155 and all of a sudden it started going down. So keep in mind, I bought that put at 20 cents. So I already am out of the stock. So anything I buy the stock for is gonna be just gravy. So what happened? The stocks, I called, the stock started going down. It was 154.62. So I call Schwab. I say my out of the money put, I want to manually exercise, which then they even confirm. So you want to sell stock at one, exercise your put and sell stock at 155. I'm like, yes, that's correct. So now I went in and bought stock at 154.62. So now I've bought literally 38 cents under 155. So now that five lot, I'm short 500 shares at 155. I've now locked in 38 cents because I bought 500 at 164.62. And I've locked in another 38 cents minus the put premium from earlier. Now that might not sound like a lot of money, but it's still 18 cents on 500 shares. So that's another $90. So now I've made on the stock, I told you I made over 600 bucks plus that extra 90. And now I've sold stock at 155 and I bought the puts to lock in that profit. Remember, uh, I mean, bought the stock. So now I've sold the stock at 155 and I bought the stock at 154.62 to make 38 cents minus that put premium. So that is how I did it on the close. Just keep in mind, there are a couple of risks. Number one, you got to have the money in your account to be able to buy it. So if you did Amazon you buy, and you did one option, you better have $300,000 share uh, dollars in your account. Number two, you got to be sure you get them on the phone. I almost, every time I do this, I want to see a active stock and I want to see that it's already down before I even call them, because if I don't get them on the phone, I'm not going to buy the stock because I won't be able to tell them what to do. I was able to get them on the phone. The other risk is you can't wait right till five o'clock. I did it at 440 and they almost weren't able to do it. So just keep that in mind. But that's how I turned a good day into a really good day. There were a lot of people that threw into short JP Morgan at 155 and they got filled after the close. That's why the stock didn't go all the way back down to here. You now had 11 million shares short that people had to cover. That's why it went down 50 cents and not all the way back to here. And that's why it took so long. I was hoping it would, but you had too many shorts even if the markets opened down. I, ho I mean, we're uh, closing down after the close. Hope this is a good explanation. We try to do these every week, triple witching, and it works even better. Take care.